Pear flavoured J2O, does it even exist? The wife swears blind it does. I've never heard of it, I've never seen it. <laughs> well, I've just trolled the town, I can't find any anywhere, so. So, how are you all doing anyway? I'm just uh, readjusting back from night shift back over to day shift. What day is it? It's Wednesday. Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's about half eight in the, uh, in the evening. Uh, had a bit of sleep this morning. Where was I? Uh, I went down to Fairfield near Pitching. Did a quick job there. And then on to Hastings to do another job there. Although that turned out that we knew it was going to just too well. Um, we got, we got, uh, where was it? We got down to Hitchin, it all went well. So we did the job, we did that job there. It all went great. Beautiful sunny weather. Uh, we had all the right stuff with us. And we carried on down. And we got so far down and it was my brother, who was back up here, who booked us a travel lodge online. And he couldn't go to our regular one in Hastings, so we had to stay at one down the road. I can't remember where it was now. And he says, oh, it's only about 13 miles away. It turns out it was actually 20. And it was on such roads that that 20 miles actually took, I think it was between 40 and 45 minutes to travel during the daytime. At night, I think we cut it down. I think we managed to slice about 10 minutes off the, of that. But what happened was, you get to you get to these, these travel lodges and of course, um, it's sort of like it depends on who's behind the desk as to whether you're going to get in early or not. Otherwise, you're not allowed until three o'clock. So we turn up and uh, we check in. What name is it under? Bell. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I've got the book in here. You've only just uh, it's only just come through. It's all paid for. Um, the room's ready now. Would you like it? Oh God, yes, please. You know, we're absolutely shattered. We've been on the road since two in the morning, sort of thing. And uh, she, says, she says, well, that's £10, please. I says, you are, it's already paid for. Yeah, but if you want to be in before three o'clock, there's an extra charge of £10. So I looked at my son-in-law and I said, I think it's time we went for something to eat now, don't you? I wasn't going to get ripped off. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you know, all right, it's probably a standard procedure with them, I don't know. But, Anyway, we ended up driving down into Hastings to sort of check out the, the drive and what have you. So anyway, we went down there, uh, checked out the drive, realised what a carry-on it was. Um, and then got... Um... Oh, come on, slow poke. And then got... Uh... We were looking for something to eat as well while we were on anyway, so... Uh, checked around and you couldn't really find anything. Uh, so we ended up uh, settling for a KFC and we had one of those like uh, uh, boxed and all the bits added on meals sort of things of each like and, and a, a, a large Pepsi and uh, we, <laughs> we, uh, we had that, went back out and set off on the drive back and um, we had a clicking from the back tyre of the van that we'd hired and uh, you know you just sort of like you just assume it's um, like a stone trapped in the tread or and I, I just said to him I said well I tell you what I said it's either a stone trapped in the tread and if it's a nail or a screw it's staying there because it's plugging the hole so anyway uh, we got back to where we were now it's on one of those little yards that's got like um, a garage and all that sort of stuff putting together and uh, pulled up at the uh, the garage uh, pump and uh, uh, topped up the uh, the fuel tank uh, to fill it to fill it back up. You know, using the cheaper fuel that you have down in the uh, south of the UK there. And um, everything was fine. Filled up the fuel, went and paid, drove away, and something fell wrong. And as it happens, I was stuck with the garage forecourt and I had to get out of the way sort of thing, you know, there's cars wanting to be in and out and everything. So, 
I got out of the way uh, and I had to sort of like do about about 50 to 100 meters around the end of like the curbstone bit and into the um, into the uh, sort of travel lodge car park and uh, so I'm hoping that it hasn't damaged the sidewall of the tire anyway but the the tire was flat it was the uh, the rear left on this great big van so uh, I put the spare on you know we've, we've still got to actually pick up the bill for the um, for the repair on that hopefully it's just going to be a, a plugged repair so uh, yeah we, we had fun really so we eventually got to sleep at about four or five hours before we had to get up and go out to the work at Hastings which was only a short job uh, because I have to say I, I do have to say this that uh, of all the different kitchens we've ever done um, the Bannatine establishments these kitchens are well looked after they are kept very clean the canopies are kept very clean um, I mean we usually give the canopies a quick wipe down if there's a bit of grease in them and stuff like that but uh, these, these, are, these are good so we mainly just get to concentrate on the fan and the ductwork and things like that uh, so yeah, uh, quite impressed. This is uh, this one's a hotel actually. This one, very nice place. Uh, so we got away from there in pretty quick time actually. Uh, got back up to Yorkshire about five o'clock this morning. Uh, top the van back up. The uh, the place wasn't going to be open where we uh, dropped the van back off for a bit. So uh, I basically went and uh, I came home. And my wife's carer still had to get up and use the toilet and that, so I just sort of like had a coffee and sat around, waited till she'd been up and gone. Went and had a shower, and then popped back down to work and took the van back, and then got back and uh, had a, I don't know, about two or three more hours sleep, something like that. Because uh, that drive all the way back up there is shattering. And I believe while I was down there, I think I may have got a, a speeding ticket from a camera. It was one of those things where I wasn't deliberately speeding. I was in like this village on this crappy bloody back road, and it's like a, a long winding road. And you, I was going. You start to go up a hill out of the base of the village, and um, I, th I think there was a there was a car park, and there's a little bit of road works going on. There were some cones there, and there was something started to come down the bank. So I sort of like I sped up a little bit to make sure that I got past the obstruction so that I left room for this uh, vehicle to come down the bank. Now there's something behind it that followed me through as well. And just as I hit the brow of the bank, it was, it's a 30 zone. And I think I was doing somewhere around about 37 miles an hour uh, as I hit the brow of this bank. And I saw the little flash uh, just at the right of me. So it either got me or the vehicle behind it or something. Maybe even both of us, I don't know. So, yeah, I suppose it depends on whether the camera was loaded, you know, because I mean, some of them are decoys and whatever, so... Oh well. Hey-ho, such is life, eh? So, uh, yeah, oh, and that, um, that job I did uh, the other week, it was um, an Italian restaurant. That we did uh, one, uh, was it, uh, yeah, it was last Monday morning. Um, I'll, I'll put some pictures in actually. You know, it's 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 not the the owner's fault or anything like that. It was pretty. It gets pretty grim in some of these ductworks, as you can imagine. A lot of grease and it goes black and tarry from the heat and what have you. Um, and sometimes it's it's down to sort of like system design more than anything else. But I get up I get up uh, this uh, ladder uh, before the scaffold and uh, before we decided whether we were going to use a scaffold or not. So I went up this ladder and I took the top hatch off that sits just above the fan because it's on an upright riser that comes out of the back of the kitchen. And I'm not kidding you. I took the took the uh, the hatch cover off, and all you could see was twigs. It was as if a tree had just grown inside this thing, and basically it was some pigeons had been trying to nest in there. So bad design, you know. Somebody hadn't uh, meshed the top of the cowl or something like that, um, and it's just bad design. So the pigeons have been down laying all these uh, twigs in there. And I'm not kidding you, it's all black and tarry, and all you can do is just reach in and grab it by the handful and keep pulling it out and pulling it out. I'll, I'll put a picture in actually. Uh, although the picture, it looks like, it looks a bit photoshopped actually because it's very white on the outside, but that's because the sun was reflecting off the steel work of the duct, so it looks a bit pale on the outside. I might be able to do something with it in the, uh, in the uh, production actually. 
Um, so, um, yeah, uh, and I would say by the time I'd got it all out and just thrown it down into the yard, you could probably half fill a large bath with it. That's how much there was in there. And that was before we could even start doing our unusual sort of like uh, scraping and spraying down and what have you. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you in a minute. What are you doing? What are you doing around there? Me? Eh? What are you doing? Me, eh? Mr. Bear? What are you doing? <laughs> oh my word. Stop blind. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, there's our uh, that's our old um, compost. Uh, that was the compost. I had to move that. Uh, had to be emptied and moved when we had the fence done, actually. So, oh god, here we go. Play with me. Play with me. You ready? You ready? You ready? Go! <laughs> Where'd you go? Where are you? Bloody nutcase. They go mental when you start kicking the ball for them, they really do. <laughs> anyway, I'm making it. Oh, I'll tell you what else I think might have happened. Uh, when I was going there, and we went over the um, over the uh, God, you see my head's just not working now because I'm so tired. It was uh, the Dartford Crossing, um, and you know you go over on the way down and under when you come back up. But uh, so we went over on the way down there, and I got stuck in the wrong lane. So it was a commercial vehicle. And um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, commercial vehicle, and I uh, got stuck in the car lane. Now I still put me two pound fifty in because it's two pound for a car, two fifty for a commercial vehicle. Um, but there's a big but. Obviously they have cameras on them, so you might get into bother for that as well. I don't know. I'll tell you. It turned out to be the sort of trip from hell by the time we'd got back. Coming back up actually when we came up, just as we came out the other side of the... What happened was we got down to the, the crossing. Uh, coming back and of course it's pitch black like. Uh, and all of a sudden the red lights came on and stopped everybody. And I thought, well hang on a minute, the, the, the toll finishes it. Uh, I think it's 10pm I think is it something, I can't remember. But I know the toll finishes and you don't have anything to pay anymore. And... Uh, then when you looked through, you could see a, a police vehicle just sort of sat there. And then all of a sudden, they let the traffic go. And then as soon as we got out the other side of the tunnel, this police vehicle was sort of appeared in front of me. And then it flagged down the wagon in front of it and pulled this wagon over. So, don't know what happened to him, poor chap. But yeah, I got some pictures, uh, like, on the way there I took one actually um, of London from the crossing so uh, yeah because it was I mean the weather was absolutely gorgeous red hot so um, but yeah I mean it's, it's, a, it's a long ride down from Yorkshire all the way down there and back uh, you know I mean when the traffic's up you can be looking anywhere between six and seven hours in a van coming back I think we did it in about about five hours, something like that, so it was pretty quick, really. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, I'll, uh, I shan't bother you all any longer. I'll, uh, let you all get on with your evening, and, uh, I hope you all look after, looking after yourselves. See you later.